Today we're going to discuss a very badass film from back in the day, 1975's Master of the Flying Guillotine, which is part two of two films. The One-Armed Boxer is part one, but this is part two, Master of the Flying Guillotine. And believe me, it stands on its own without you even having to watch the first one. But if you can, and of course you can by the time you'll be watching this review, by all means, go online, YouTube in fact, and you can stream it and watch it in its entirety. But in the meantime, let's discuss Master of the Flying Guillotine, its pros, its cons, and its incredibly diverse plot of revenge, madness, and of course, Plain old lies. Master of the Flying Guillotine was always a summer classic, as every summer like clockwork after 1975 it came on every year. But they never showed part one, at least not in California. They showed part two every year, consecutively for like eight years, they were going every summer. So this is a film I know by heart, it's a favorite. And I think after you watch it, it might become one of your favorites too. So by all means, you should check it out. Which also begs our correction of things. Where else in cinema history can you find a story where you have your protagonist, a one-armed man, master of Kung Fu, against a blind man with, of all things, a guillotine. But all this is brought out by matters of revenge and a lot of convoluted lies spun from the first film carried over into the second, where the Shaolin Monk, Forgery, aka the Blind Man, aka the Guillotine, is out for the blood of the one-armed bandit. Well, one-armed boxer, but in his mind he's a bandit, because he considers everyone that's involved with the one-armed boxer is nothing but a mean spy and a rebel and they must be destroyed. But the master of the Guillotine, well, he just wants everybody dead to get his way, whether they're guilty or not. See what I mean? Like all our classic villains, the 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 man with the plan has his henchmen, like the Thai boxer. But his own appearance is always something to say. If you see him, it's time to leave. Otherwise, you die. I mentioned he has great hearing. But these days, we'll be able to stream and just download things. You can find this movie in the now second I do watch this review. I think you should watch it. And in my case, well, definitely in your case, you'll find a copy that's in English. Because mine, unfortunately, the only copy I could get was, of course, in Japanese or Chinese. Because it's got a couple of dozen, but they're not. None of them are English. <laughs> but all in all, it's a great flick. You should really check it out. It's different. It's what you call a good old-fashioned high-tech karate movie from back in the day. Going where all the impossible things that shouldn't happen are able to happen because, well... That's why it's called fantasy and fiction put together in a martial arts. But if you do choose to see and decide to really watch the Master of the Flying Guillotine, I suggest before you do, you should watch and find the one on Boxer, which I know you can probably find them online on YouTube. Watch the struggles and the pain this man went through in the first movie, and you'll think that the second one was a cakewalk compared to what he went through. Discover and see how he lost his arm in the first place. 
I still have to do a better day with another review, but if you really want to get into how deep this movie goes, watch part one and part two back to back. Give yourself a definite thrill. Master of Flying Guillotine has a lot of elements that are both visually pleasing and also straight out of violent fantasy from scaling walls to just define all matters of common sense and ruling but made well in a way that you can follow it and enjoy it such as the Indian Hindu man after him now going dude where'd you learn that I can really learn some of that I, I, I can use some of what you got but the film holds many different twists to it but all device from the first stance from a lie caused against the one-armed boxer in the first place and it just continues with his ever-ending pain from all these different assassins employed and directed by you know the master of the flying guillotine there is henchmen and they try their best to do what they must but they still fall short in comparison to the one-armed boxer's skills we've got nothing better to do tonight or tomorrow one of you viewing this just you know after this review is over pop it up online check it out enjoy it it's a really good film and even after all the decades that it's been around it still holds on as a martial arts classic definitely a cult classic if anybody has been around for my time they know this is a summertime joint master of flying guillotine like I said man check it out and enjoy it it's a pop thrill definitely a buzz for your brain like I said you know, I'm no film critic I just like talking about really good movies the way it's entertaining if you wanted everything broken down you can go up there and look at Wikipedia and pull that crap down and read it yourself but I'm doing a shortcut with this one but you know you should check this movie out for a lot of reasons it's got its violence but it's not too bad it's not too heavy but it's not so light that makes you go yeah that's not believable it's enjoyable now as it was, you know, over four years ago. It's a great piece of work. Matter of fact, the one-armed bandit movies, they kind of go back. I mean, I really mean to call them a bandit. But the one-armed boxing movies go back into the 50s in the Chinese culture. If you want to really check out the good ones, you check out all of them. They start in the 50s, and if you want to really dig, you can. That's what, you know, all that's for. But all in all, it's a movie that takes you and remakes you and goes, yeah, I know Bruce is the best, but these are things when I'm not on the rest of the time. You should check it out. Good looks. Definitely. One thing I was told me about this was going, these guys got way too much adrenaline going and way too much testosterone. It's like, okay, but you know, you do what you do. It's your neighborhood. I'm not about to come out there and mess with you. This guy right here going, yeah, I'm not trying to deal with this. Just leave him alone. You know, let him go in his room and think about what he's done. Because it's going to be that kind of party. Brass tax, brass ass. But in conclusion, you know, Master of the Flying Guillotine is a 70 joint that just won't stop giving, even after all this time. Came out in 75. It was badass then, still badass now. Don't blame me, just go look it up. Find it on YouTube. Punch it up. Get yours in English, because I hadn't watched it as many times as I have. Even with the subtitles, I would be like a little upset about it. But I have watched it, I have it in English. That's what it is. If you guys got the beat of being able to find it online now and get it in English, enjoy. This has been Giovanni, and well, you know, I'm out. Peace, till next time. Love you all. And on my way out, a shout out to, you know, big friend, good friend, Adam King. We miss you much out here up in CS. Big man Jake, Kat, and Kristen. Christopher, hey, you know what time it is. Miss you all. Glad to see you the other day. But a shout out to all you, my local loyals and lovelies. And for my lovelies across the water, Diana, Ari, Philip, and Joseph. Take care of yourselves. I'll be in touch. And Ari, keep
keep that fucking camera going for me, man. I'll see you next time around. In the meantime, y'all, peace. Stay straight. Be well. Be yourselves. Be beautiful. Be good. Be safe. Later. Yeah.